Hello and welcome to another Leica review. Today we are doing a full review on the Leica CL camera. Now this camera that has come out some time ago has been one of those cameras that I really wanted to explore and use for a considerable amount of time before I could give my full input into saying whether this camera is the right camera for certain applications. Now, for those who don't know, Leica CL is an interchangeable small compact camera with an APS-C sensor type of uh, sensor with a CMOS sensor. And that has been like a camera that Leica has taunted as being a, a really good camera above all the other cameras that they have in their lineups, as well as a camera that is well suited for travel. So we're going to look at these applications and we're going to look at the features, we're going to look at how to get the best results from this camera. But first, let's look at and define what this camera is. It's about 14.2 ounces, so it comes to about 400 grams, 403 grams, and it is a camera that is very solidly made. It's, it's, it still has the standard Leica minimalistic approach in design. Which So this particular sensor is a 24.2 megapixel sensor. So if you compare it to the full frame sensors that are found in, for example, like a M10, you will find that they're about the same. Yet the sensor size is smaller on this one. What that means is that you're going to get the same number of megapixels, yet it is going to be a smaller sensor, which means that its low light performance will not be as good as a full frame. And there are advantages using full frame, there are advantages using to an APS-C sensor type of camera. What is beautiful about this is that it is a very compact camera. It's a compact camera that you can put in your pocket and go out photographing. Also, this is one that has an interchangeable lens mount. What that means is you can take this uh, camera and then you can put on it a 35 millimeter, you can put a zoom type of lens on it. You could even uh, interchange it with uh, different light plus other lineup of lenses by using an adapter. For example, you can take, uh, for example, a Leica M, a Simulex 35 millimeter, place an adapter and then apply it onto this camera which will give you results that are going to be incredibly useful for photography in under different circumstances. Yet when we look at this camera for overall design, we, what we see is, is that it's compact and when this camera came out it was uh, designed to be delivered with an 18 millimeter lens which is considered a pancake lens which will means that you can have a very slim fit uh, body design that's a lens and camera combinations that you can take out and use it. Now, uh, there has been a lot of criticism in terms of Leica cameras being expensive. And this is no surprise here, it's $2,800. So it sells uh, for $2,795 to be precise. And what we're seeing is that you're spending about almost $3,000 with the taxes on achieving a camera which is APS-C, you could take that money and you can buy maybe three or four different cameras from different camera manufacturers, yet attain results that are going to be in similar categories in terms of the number of megapixels and other things. But what you will find is that you are, uh, you are making compromises, you're making uh, changes in understanding why this camera is so special and so unique. The review is about like a camera and this one is got something very special which people miss out and that is the fact that it has a color science that has been designed to deliver results that are in line with Leica's look what I would call the accuracy of colors and that is what I like to see when I'm photographing a lot of people miss out on the idea that you buy a camera and you can 
tweak whatever you shot in the Lightroom or in other softwares to achieve the look you want. What happens in that respect is that once you get one of the colors wrong or one of the colors uh, misaligned, you'll have a whole range of other colors that are not in line with what you're actually capturing or what your eye sees. So what has to happen oftentimes is that you need to use a color chart, which is not always uh, and a viable option if you're doing uh, photo shoots just uh, when you're traveling or when you're going about. You, know, you don't want to tell the person, I take this color chart and put it next to your face before I take a photograph. That is not always the best option. So what happens a lot of times is that they get the photograph, they transport it or they transfer it into their computers and then they start editing it. And what happens is that, for example, they might have a blue dress on the subject and that that blue dress will look a little bit off in terms of color. And then when they try to adjust that color, what they will find is that the other colors shift which is in that color range. So you might have a weirdness in the color of the blue sky when you change the color of the blue that is on the dress. And that also it applies to warmer tones that are, for example, the Caucasian skin that has been the most difficult color to get accurately when you're doing photography. And that is something that has to t be taken into consideration when we are photographing. Now, Leica CL has that capability, has the capability of being able to capture images that are in line with Leica's known color heritage. And that heritage is being continued on with other lineups like the Leica TL2, like uh, the Leica Q2, and all these other cameras that have come out. But what we are seeing is, we're seeing a compact camera that is going to be useful for anyone who wants to travel light. And also who's passionate about using a camera for a long period of time. A 24 megapixel camera of this caliber is going to serve you for a very, very long time. And if you know how to use the features of this camera, you're going to get results that are going to be almost in the league of a professional camera's output. What I mean by that is, for, for example, if you take the ability of this camera to shoot at 25,000 uh, shutter speed, what you're seeing is that shutter speed that is going to allow you to do uh, photography in uh, broad daylight is going to give you ability to freeze action, it's going to give you ability to use it with strobes or indoors. And if you put this on a tripod, you can do uh, long exposures, you can do nighttime photography, you could do all kinds of things with this uh, very small compact camera, yet still achieve results that are uh, very beautiful, very artistic, and very creative. And for some people who, who don't want to carry around the camera with them all day uh, that is bulky and large or they don't want to carry it, they, they can put this camera into their purse, they could put it in the jacket pocket and take it out when they want to uh, photography. And for that very reason, I find this to be a very useful instrument. It's an instrument to create images. And having said that, once you start using it, you become familiar with the this ease of using it. So there are, there are very minimalistic buttons on top when you dial it and when you change the settings. It is very intuitive, so that makes it easier to use. What I have found over the years is a lot of people will come to my workshops and they will come with other cameras and say, I'm looking to buy a Leica camera, but I want to first try out and see what the Leica camera is like or what what it will perform like and maybe understand how to operate a rangefinder. And what happens is that they come with their cameras and as soon as they move on to a camera like a Leica a CL, what they say is, oh, this is so simple, it's like using my smartphone. But in the past, what they had done is they had to have this learning curve in operating this camera and getting uh, to know where the buttons were laid out, getting to know where the menus, certain features were. And this way what you do is you figure out the three basic things. You figure out the ISO, you figure out the shutter speed, you figure out the aperture. Along those 
three parameters, you are able to create your look, your, the, the desired effect that you want to do. If you want to blur out the background, you can operate your aperture in a such a manner that you create a very blurred background. Or if you want to have everything in focus look, which is m something you may prefer to do when you're doing landscape photography, this is an option. What you are finding is that this camera is a versatile tool in those applications. Again, what has to happen is to understand why this camera was built for the intended purpose. It is not a Leica M, which requires you to know how to focus with a rangefinder. It is not a, s a professional camera like the Leica SL or the Leica S. This is a camera that has autofocus, giving you the ability to focus the subject and get good results, yet be simple enough and compact enough to carry around all day if you need to. Another important thing to consider is the technology that is inside, that's the processor. And we find that there's a Maestro 2 processor, which is the current processor technology that is used in all Leica cameras, including uh, the Leica uh, Q2, which has recently been announced. So what we're seeing is the technology inside is a solid technology that has been used throughout Leica's lineup. And that gives you the, the belief that this, there were no compromises made when they were creating this camera's uh, components and designing it. So in a way, you're actually paying for a quality that is going to make a difference. And that difference will be in terms of the long-term use, in terms of functionality, in terms of the way that it operates. And you're also paying for the experience that this camera is going to deliver a result that is going to be in line with what you have been used to if you have been using Leica cameras. It serves perfectly as a secondary camera to, uh, for example, Leica SL. Uh, for me, it is a camera that I would love to take whenever I'm going out in the evening when I don't want to take a large camera with me. And for that purpose, I think it serves very well what it was intended to do. Again, the choice of lenses are quite, uh, quite a few. Yet, the first choice of my lens on this lineup will be the 18mm. Let's look at the other feature that is important here. Now, just about all cameras that are being manufactured to these days have uh, video capabilities. And Leica CL as well has this video capability. And what we're seeing here is this camera that is being able to capture 4K footage at 30 frames per second, which is the broadcast standard. You're not going to get other variations. It's just one standard frame rate. But what that says is that you're going to have less motion blur. And for that, for intensive uploading onto YouTube or Facebook or social platforms, what you're not getting is the DCI, which is the, the cinema standard. What you're getting is the YouTube standard, which is uh, a, a more like a UHD technology or, or, or what we call the ultra high definition TV 4K technology. And that is the technology that is pretty much accepted around the world as a 4K technology. In essence, it is not a 4K because it's 380 60 in, instead of 4000 or 4096, which is the DCI technology. What is though nice is that you can take these images, you can uh, don't have to edit it because the color science is automatically applied. You don't have to worry about the settings or, or have control over the settings, which may be considered a little difficult for anyone who does not understand uh, filming aspects of it. So for that reason, it is a very nice point and shoot type of camera, which uh, any person who has no experience using uh, a camera that can film can use it. In, a, in essence, it works very much like uh, a, what would a smartphone would lurk, work like. So you point, you shoot, and you press the button. It has all the features. It gets the, the color, exposure, and everything else right. And then you can take that image, transport it into your computer, and share it with the world. Now, most people will not need the 4K technology, yet it is there available if you need to. Uh, it can shoot uh, HD quality, which is a technology that has been 
the pretty much the standard for the last, last uh, decade or so. So that is an option. Personally, what I think about this camera, I think of it as something that I would use mostly for photography and not for filming purposes, because filming requires more intricate setup. But for if I was in a situation where I had no ability to access cameras or film cameras, what I would do is I would, could use this camera to capture uh, something that is happening that instant that would require me to, f uh, to film it. Uh, personally, uh, for anyone who is uh, starting up in photography, would benefit greatly from having this kind of a setup where you would be able to capture both video and photography and share it on different social platforms. Yet the question always comes, is it worth the price that it is at 3000 plus the fact that you have to purchase the lens that is going to bring you almost to five grand and five grand is going to be a lot of expenditure that a lot of people might question is it worth it well the worth it question becomes an issue where you would have to weigh in the the importance of what is going to provide you and what you are having versus uh, what you could get for your money elsewhere a lot of people feel that it is a lot of money to expand on a camera and then once you spend that much money, uh, some people might say, why don't I go and buy a full frame camera? Uh, that being said, uh, it is a camera that is very compact. So for me, you, it's not a choice between buying a Leica Q2 and Leica CL because Leica CL is a completely different camera. It has interchangeable lens. It has a lot of features. It has the ability to deliver results that are in line with Leica's uh, look. So for me, that is an option that I can consider if, for example, I wanted to purchase it when I'm traveling on, on deserts or, or when I'm going to assignments where uh, a secondary camera of this size will be beneficial. For those other applications, it could be something that is preferred uh, for, for example, skiing trips, or it could be when you're traveling uh, around Europe, where you could take this camera and take photographs and simply just enjoy your day instead of having to carry many lenses, many, uh, many uh, gear to capture images. That is going to be a, a problem for you if you, if you don't want to carry them around. For, for that very reason, I like to have the Leica CL. Um, for those who question the, 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 its performance, I would say, you know, it is a ca camera that is of good quality and it delivers results that are in line with the competition. And sometimes uh, that is not the deciding factor. The deciding factor is what you are putting in front of that camera, which is the lens. For me, having a Leica lens is a very important because it delivers very good sharpness, it delivers very good contrast, it delivers very good results that I find to be important. And it is for that reason I like to put a Leica glass in front of the camera. And for me, having a Leica camera is important, but equally or more importantly is to have a Leica lens. So 18 millimeter there is very good because it's very light, it's very s small, and it is meant to be used in autofocus mode. I know people are going to try to focus with that manual focus. It is not uh, the camera that I would use for it because it's very small and it's very difficult to do that uh, focus element and turning it into one way or another while trying to keep the camera steady. If you want to really learn and how to use a, a manual camera, then Leica M is the camera to use. And what you want to achieve uh, can easily be created by using uh, this autofocus function where you want to throw the background out of focus or you want to uh, put everything into focus. All these can be set through the camera's aperture and shutter speed to create the look you want. This camera also delivers 10 frames per second shooting. What that means is if you, for example, went out and you were photographing your kids who were playing soccer, or they were doing fun, or you, they were having fun in the garden, splashing water, or they were at the beachside swimming, and you wanted to freeze the action. 
that 10 frames per second is going to give you that ability. For that reason, it is a relatively fast camera, and it's a camera that can deliver results for other purposes if you are intended to use it for of on a more professional basis. For example, if you are uh, photographing and you decided at one point that you want to use this camera to photograph uh, action that is going on, like a performance, like a ballet, this could be a good camera to use. For that purpose, you can put a 35 millimeter uh, lens on it, and then that will give you a longer focal length because of the multiplication on the APS-C sensor. And then you're getting an image that is going to deliver incredibly good results. Similarly, you can put a 60 millimeter lens, which is the macro lens at f2.8, that is also going to give you great results. So the options are there and the flexibility is there to create the images in the desired manner. So for me, that is a big plus and that gives me the liberty to grow with the camera and to experiment in photography in the way that it is going to enhance my abilities, enhance my photography in the best direction. That being said, like a Q2, which is a fixed lens, does not deliver the same kind of applications, doesn't land as much in terms of being able to use it in versatile situations as a Leica CL. So in that respect, it has, Leica CL has, CL has an advantage. Those people who will argue that Leica Q2 has a crop sensor, what you're actually doing is you're cropping, 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 getting smaller and smaller, which can also be done if you're doing uh, uh, in the Leica CL. You can take it to Lightroom and then zoom in, zoom in, and get smaller and smaller part, part, part portion of that image and saying, oh, this equates to 90 millimeters, 120 millimeters when you crop the image. That is not the way I would consider that this camera and this lens combination should be used and that is not, in my point of view, how the cameras and lenses were designed to be used. It is a way for like a Q to deliver a, in a more versatile sense uh, those people who would want to purchase a, a, a camera and lens combination that is not fixed, yet you're offering a cropping mode, which is a very smart marketing move in terms of getting that customer in to buy the Leica Q2. On the Leica CL, you are in actually creating a platform on which you can build different types of lens and camera combinations to create a look that you may want to use for your photography. Finally, I want to talk about the low light performance. Now, this uh, is taunted as having 50,000 ISO, which is rather a high ISO, yet how much of it is usable is a question. And in my testing, what I found is that 3200 is a very good level. You could go up to 6400 in the ISO range. Personally, I like to shoot it at, at the base ISO, which 100 or 200 ISOs is perfect to use it. And with the shutter speed that it has, you can do this in daytime, where you don't need to uh, push your ISO up in any way, and at nighttime, what you can do is you can use tripods or other settings that will allow you to have as clean of an image as possible. One other thing that is worth mentioning is the contrast-based detection system. When we look at this, is that we've seen 49 point phase, uh, the color contrast detection, which means that you are going to get a a f rather fast autofocus. For me, 49 or 149 doesn't make all that much difference. It's the way that you use the camera. Now, there are cameras that have over 300 uh, uh, detection points. Uh, that is, I think, an overdone point. It's a way to sell the cameras more uh, easily. For me, what is important is that does it have the contrast-based detection system? for the autofocus because that yields the best results because you can see the contrast better and the camera is able to focus uh, much better when it has a contrast-based system. For that, like a CL again, excels and delivers results that is pretty good. And I have found that you can get accurate results if somebody's running towards you or away from you. 
and is able to keep up. So that is a very, very good, important feature. And for me, if I was going to use this camera on a daily basis for photographing on the street, I don't see any reason why anybody should not be able to capture uh, photographs, freeze motion, uh, get the feeling that uh, of a wide angle lens would give you with the 18 millimeter and also be able to do portraits if the case calls for it. So for me it is a very versatile lens and camera combination and it is one that could be invested in if you are going to expand on that APS-C platform. And for me investing in a camera system is is not just buying the camera, it's also buying the lens. So, so I hope this has been an informative review. I will be talking more in detail about how this camera performs uh, on, on the field and also share with you some of the images that I took with it so we can discuss how it performs uh, in certain applications and certain photography projects and then we will conclude with details on where you can purchase this camera and lens combination uh, whether it's online or through different platforms so you can get the best deal and make an informative decision. If you have questions about this camera, if you have questions about Leica systems, please drop me a line. I will try to answer your questions as best as I can and I look forward to seeing you in our next review. Thank you for watching.